Hey, welcome back. Simeon here, and recently I replaced the burrs inside of my Barazza Encore grinder. I'd love to discuss why I think that if you're brewing coffee at home, you should be using a grinder, and why I recommend this particular unit. Um, I think it has a great value, and I'd love to kind of explain that and dive into that more. Uh, I also did some tests before and after replacing the burrs, so if you already have a grinder that you're using at home and you've been using it for some time, I'd love to just kind of show you the effects of replacing the burrs and why I recommend it on what schedule. So firstly, why do I think that you need a coffee grinder at home? I think the most important thing to, to think about here is coffee freshness. After coffee has been roasted, it begins to break down. Um, it begins to oxidize. That is, oxygen begins to tear away at the um, gases and the proteins and the lipids and everything that makes coffee this complex and balanced drink that we love. Um, that begins to fade away. Um, and the longer you allow that whole bean coffee to sit, the, the less of that naturally occurring flavor is going to be left inside the beans. When you grind those coffee beans, the, um, the roasted coffee, you actually create more surface area where oxygen is able to um, start to tear down those materials in the coffee bean and then that actually speeds up that process and it can go from you know as a whole bean where you've got weeks of shelf life in it and you've, you've definitely got at least two weeks of maximum potential and up to a month of good quality um, and when you grind it you're looking at maybe a day or two um, but you're actually gonna see noticeable difference in a matter of hours so that's why I recommend that everybody has a home grinder because it allows you to buy whole bean which will be able to store and maintain its quality for a longer period of time. Now, I, why I recommend this grinder. One, its price point is really good. It's about 129 US dollars right now on Amazon, um, which is a pretty good price. You can also get it straight from Baratza. But if you're doing pour overs, auto drip, um, French press, or even toddy at home, um, this grinder is going to be a great grinder for all of those things. If you're using, if you're wanting to do espresso, um, it really will not go fine enough for that. Now it uses conical burrs, um, which are made from stainless steel. So they're really strong and they last for a long time. Now they do wear out and that's exactly what this video is about. So for the price, um, and its performance, I think it matches up really well. Um, it's not the greatest grinder that you can buy, and it's not the cheapest grinder that you can buy, but if you're looking for that balance of expense and performance, this one falls right into that sweet spot where it does a great job with a lot of different things. It doesn't do an awesome job or a perfect job by any means, um, but it, it does get the job done for most types of brewing. One of the ways that I measure the quality of something, what it's worth to me, is frequency of use and length of life. I mean, most people will drink coffee every day. So you could use this grinder every day um, and the shelf life on it, well, it can be for a pretty long time. See, Baratza has a program where um, rather than tossing it, you can fix it. They have this idea that when they build their machines, they make almost all of the components replaceable so that you don't have to just throw it out if the motor goes bad in it or if this switch on the side pops off. It doesn't make the grinder useless because they provide almost every single piece of this grinder as a replacement part. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you tried, you could order all of the parts and just build this grinder from them. But for replacement of the top burr and the cone burr, which is on the bottom and that's the part that spins, um, the total cost was only $35, all right? So I spent 100 and um, 29 on the grinder originally, 
Um, and then I've spent another $35 on it. Now I've had this grinder for five years. Um, so even if I had spent that on uh, the burrs two years ago, that still would have been a grinder that lasted me for five years that I only paid 160 bucks for. So that's not too bad because that comes out to just pennies every day that I got to use this grinder. Um, and so that's why I think that it's the, the best value grinder right now on the market. So how difficult is it to replace a part in that? That's the other factor here, right? Because I am not a great mechanic by any means. In fact, I, I'm just really awful when it comes to um, working on physical objects and, and kind of taking things apart and, and putting them back together. That's not something that I'm good at. Um, so this was a bit of a challenge for me um, to see if I can manage it, then I know that most anybody else could manage it. And while there was um, some parts of it that were fairly challenging, um, I had almost all the tools that I needed here at home and it really all, all in all took me about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to take it all the way apart and then put it all the way back together. So um, real quickly, I'd just like to show you kind of that process just so you can see how quick and easy it um, came apart, went back together. And then we're gonna talk about the performance difference between fresh burrs um, and old, old burrs. So for this, uh, taking off most of the external items is really simple. Uh, the top bird does just pull right out. So if you need to replace that, it's like two minutes, you're done. You just take off the hopper and the seal and it's good to go. For the rest of this stuff, it, most of it just pops off. And then the case is one that I found to be the trickiest, um, just cause I knew that if I was to break it, it'd be a visible uh, blemish for this uh, grinder and it had to live on my counter, but was able to get it off without damaging it all. Beyond that, to remove the motor and the gearbox was just four screws and one pin that you unplug it with. Once the motor and the gearbox was off, then it's another four screws and that will remove the motor from the gearbox. Um, and then from there, you're just one bolt away. Um, and that bolt is opposite of the lower burr. And once you break it, it comes off very easily and you just knock the burr out um, there's a gear in the gearbox that will also come out from that. But beyond that, then it's about disconnecting uh, the drive shaft, which is actually very difficult. I had the hardest time with this. It's a reverse thread, um, and I had to get a deep well socket for that. So I couldn't get enough with like a stubby socket. So I had to get a deep well one. Um, and then I used just um, a pair of pliers to grip the um, burr. I would recommend replacing that drive shaft if you're going to replace the bottom burr. It just makes the process a lot easier. Um, I damaged that drive shaft and was still able to get it back together, um, but I kind of wished that I'd paid the five bucks and gotten a new drive shaft instead. Putting it back together is just the opposite of um, taking it apart. So let's just fast forward to me getting all of this put back together. Ready? <laughs> She's back. All right. So it didn't, I uh, don't think I heard it too much, but the burrs are in, in now. I replaced both the top and the bottom um, burrs. So, um, which I would say you could probably replace the top burrs every year to maybe year and a half. And then you could replace the bottom burr every two to three years because this, this conical burr um, is really tough. It's back together now. I want to test it out and put it through um, the sieve test and the extractant test and see what sort of improvements we have with fresh burrs in it. So let's get on that. Okay, so you can see, you know, it is a bit of a process. Um, there is a few things that, you know, you have to be careful of when you're taking it apart. Um, but all in all, for 30 to 40 bucks, replacing the burrs, you practically get a new grinder. Um, and you can be assured that if anything else were to go wrong with the grinder, that you could continue to replace those parts. Um, and for less than $50 at a time, you can keep this grinder going for years on end. How were the burrs performing after five years? 
I'll have to admit, not great. Um, on the grinder's finest setting, um, I did a particle distribution test using a cruve. Um, most of the particles, um, I would say upwards of 70%, um, were larger than 1100 microns. Um, so that is, these are boulders of, of coffee grinds. They're just massive and they're very, very difficult to extract from. So unless you're using like a French press or um, a toddy brewer, you're probably not gonna get as much out of those coffee grounds as you would like, um, which means that they're gonna come off over sour and thin. Um, in the case of brewing a V60 with those coffee grounds, I was only able to get about a 14% extraction rate. Um, that is, I was only able to extract out of the coffee 14% of their total mass. Um, normally for um, coffee brewing, you would be aimed at 18 to 22% um, or even higher if you wanted, um, you could. Um, so in the case of falling in at 14, you're looking at coffee that is very underwhelming. It's going to be weak and it's going to be sour um, and it's going to lack that sweetness and bitterness that you're looking for in a cup. It's not going to pair well with other flavors or milks. Um, so on its own, wasn't doing a great job of it after five years of use on those burrs. However, I replaced the burrs, um, put it back together, and um, did the same test where I took the finest setting on the grinder um, and I ran it through a sieve and I was able to get all the majority of the uh, coffee grounds down below 700 microns. So we went from 70% being above 1100 microns to 70% being below 700 microns. After replacing the burrs and um, brewing coffee with it, I was able to increase the extraction almost immediately up to 18%. So getting it right in that range um, without having to adjust my, uh, my brewing method at all, I was able to get a very nice cup of coffee from that. I have since been dialing this in for a V60 as that's what I've been brewing at home um, during the past few months and um, I've got a recipe that I just absolutely love. I wake up every day and I'm excited to brew that cup of coffee. Um, if you do have a coffee grinder that you've been using at home for a long time, those burrs are going to be wearing down, especially if you're using it um, very consistently. So you can check on those grinders, check with the manufacturer to see if they're able to replace those burrs. If not, and you're going to have to buy a new grinder anyways, I would recommend going with a Baratza um, because they do allow you to, to do just that. If anything breaks, you can fix it. Um, they not only provide the parts, they provide the instructions on how to do it, and they've designed these so that it's very easy to replace any of those parts on. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this inf information useful. Um, if you are searching for a grinder and you'd like to know some of my other options, um, I will link them below. I really hope that you are safe and that you are well, both physically and mentally. As always, I hope you have a blessed day and um, I'll see you later. Cheers, guys. The proteins, the lipids. Sadie May. Sadie. Hey, 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 Sadie. My dog, my dog Sadie, everyone. She's a pest. Hey. You quit that.